If you wish your dog's bath time looked a little bit more like this and less like this, then stay tuned because I'm going to show you how you can achieve cooperative bath times with your dog. I'm Natalie, this is Chaos, welcome to Canine Concepts. I'm Dr. Natalie Rogers, I'm an accredited professional dog trainer and I lecture at one of Australia's top universities, teaching psychology students about anxiety, stress, animal learning and behaviour. Here at Canine Concepts, I show you how to train your dog with fun games backed up by serious science. Today, I'm going to be working with adoptive boxer brothers, Chaos and Havoc. Bath time is something we've had to work slowly on with both of these dogs. Developing Chaos's confidence has been a work in progress from day one. In fact, his breeder emphatically told us he hates the hose. Havoc used to hate bath times so much he'd cower, tremble and even attempt to bite. So if you're struggling with your dog's bath time, I know exactly where you're coming from. By the end of this video, you'll know the steps that you need to work on right now with your dog to achieve not just tolerance, but genuine cooperation. Let's get into it. The biggest reason why people don't see improvement with things like bath time or nail trimming is because they're pushing their dogs too far. Even some really popular trainers on YouTube are getting this wrong because they're missing those early signs of discomfort. We're gonna overcome this by teaching our dogs a consent behavior. That consent behavior is the same as going to your dentist and being able to say, okay, I'm ready to start, or hang on, I just need a break. Versus your dentist holding on to you so you can't escape and then continuing even though you're trying to tell them that you're uncomfortable. No amount of someone shoving cheese or hot dogs down your throat is going to make you feel better in that situation. But if the dentist had just worked within your comfort zone and challenged you a little bit here and there, that's how we make progress. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing today with your dog. Just like the dentist, we're less afraid when we're in control. So we're going to teach your dog a consent behavior. They're going to put two paws up on an object to tell Tell us that they're ready to start. So the first thing that we want to do is just get the dog comfortable around the object that they're going to put their paws on. So your dog might take a little while just to warm up to whatever this strange object is. Go ahead. You can see he chose to interact with the object. He chose to get nice and close. Good boy, that's lovely. So I'm just going to reward him for that bravery. There you go. You might like to try. Nice. Luring. So what I've got is one piece of food in my hand, just like that. And I'm going to put it near his nose, nice, and lure him near the object. I'll just show you the luring once again. Good. Beautiful. To make sure he's nice and comfortable, I'm going to feed a few pieces of food on the object. Then I'm going to toss my next piece of food away and see if Chaos chooses to come back. Ready? Go get that. Now it's his choice. Let's see, what does he choose to do? Good boy. So we can see that Chaos is nice and comfortable coming on the object. Oh, you're gonna do some back foot pivoting. That's very clever. That's not the trick that we're doing just at the moment. How about we turn this way so they don't get a doggy bum? No one wants to see a doggy bum. Now, Havoc is my deaf dog, so I'm gonna use a thumbs up instead of saying words like good or nice or yes. You can see he's also much more tentative than Chaos was. He is not a fan of water. So I'm gonna demonstrate exactly what everyone wants. Show me with a dog who doesn't know it. So all I'm doing for this first stage is just getting him comfortable with putting his paws up on the object. And you can see that there's water around, so he knows that at some stage he's likely going to get wet, but it's his choice to choose that interaction. No one's gonna force him to do it. Make sure you're practicing the two paws on game, lots around the house. So when it comes to bath time training, the behavior is ready to go. Next, we add in the handling. So what I'm gonna do with him, with his paws on the object, I'm going to gently stroke his shoulder and say, nice, nice is my marker. I'm marking the event, nice. Just making sure he's nice and comfortable being handled while he's on the object. Nice work. Because eventually I'm going to turn the hose on and I wanna make sure that he's happy with just something nice and easy. Good boy. Before I go and up the ante by turning on the hose. So let's toss this piece of food off and we'll see it working all together. So he'll offer putting his paws up. The next thing I'll do 
Nice. You can see I'm saying nice at the same time that I stroke him. And then the food comes after. We'll do that one more time. Go get it. We'll wait for chaos to choose to come back and interact. Next is my hand. Nice work. He's a good boy. And then the food comes last. So just like we did with chaos before, he's chosen to put his paws up. I'm going to put my hand on his side, give him a little pat and say, good job, little man. And toss the piece of food away so it's his choice to come and interact again. I'll show you that one more time. He chooses to put his paws on. See the little lip lick and him looking over his side. It's just telling me he's a little bit nervous about this. So even though he doesn't have his tail tucked or he's not shying away or freezing, that little lip lick and that little look away just tells me he's not 100% comfortable with this situation. You can actually see um, Havoc's tail. When Havoc was really little, it got broken in two places. This is before he even came into foster care, before he got rescued. So that's why his tail looks a little bit strange. But just like any other dog, if you see their back rounded and their bottom tucking under, that's an indication that they're not really comfortable. You can see here he's nice and comfortable. Ears are in a nice neutral position, nice relaxed face muscles, and he's just enjoying his stroking at the moment. So I'm going to release him off the bucket and introduce the hose turned off. If you're getting some value from this, consider giving it a thumbs up so it can spread to even more people. Thank you. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do when I've got my hose here is actually see that he's okay with the object around him. Good. Now what I'm looking at, what's his ear position like? They're not pulled back, they're in their nice normal position. He's nice and comfortable. I can have a look at the shape of his back and where his tail is. You can see his tail is in just a nice neutral position. His back is nice and straight, just as it normally would be. It's not rounded. He's not doing things like looking away from me. He's not lip licking, except when the drool is coming out of his mouth. He knows if he does this behavior, food's gonna be on its way. Got a bit of Pavlov's dog happening, don't we? So what I'm gonna do now, I've got my hose on a nice low setting, just on a nice shower setting. Be really careful with the pressure that you've got your water. This is not funny. This is a really distressed dog. It's also 30 degrees here. So I know that it's gonna be nice and comfortable. The temperature's gonna be fine for him. It's not gonna be too hot or too cold. How do we get the hose? Good boy. So he's put his paws on. I'm just gently gonna... Bit of water. Nice. You could see he looked at that then. I'm not too concerned just at the moment, but I wanna keep an eye on that. So. Just as I put my hands on there before, I'm gonna put the water on there. Nice, good boy. Do you want a drink? Do you wanna have a little drink from it? There we go, good boy. So again, I'm seeing, does he wanna offer coming into the object? Good job, nice boy, good job. So I'm just marking, saying nice, when the water is on him. Just to check, does he enjoy playing this game? I'm gonna to toss a piece of food away and just see, what does he choose to do? He knows that the hose is gonna come. Does he think that this is worth it? He just offered a one paw. Maybe that tells me he's not as fine as we think he is. So I'm gonna take it back a little bit. Let's just feed for hanging out on the object. Toss it away and see if he chooses to come back. Notice Chaos hesitates for a moment. Good job, well done. I'm gonna feed on the object. And he's free to leave at any time. That is a really important component of cooperative care. You'll notice throughout our whole training, my dogs are not restrained at any point. They are free to leave whenever they choose. I want my dogs to tell me if they're uncomfortable. That information tells me if I'm working at the right level or if I'm making it too hard for them. They shouldn't need to suffer if my training plan was rubbish. If we use something like a lead to stop our dogs from moving away, then not only is that not cooperation, it can actually make the dog's fear and anxiety worse because they know they have no choice. If we prevent flight, we're leaving them with only fight to tell us if they're uncomfortable. And that's where so many training plans can go wrong and actually cause fear to become aggression. Right. Good job. Okay, so again, Chaos has offered his paws on. 
I'm going to turn the hose up just a little bit because I saw that he was doing really, really well. Oh, thank you for the kisses. It feels a little bit like a massage, doesn't it? Yeah. You can see that Chaos's body is still in its neutral position. He is in normal position. There's no furrows in his brow. He's not just tolerating this. By keeping Chaos in his comfort zone, we're building a positive conditioned emotional response to the hose. Now, if you notice that your dog is not comfortable at any stage, just take it slower. I do just that with Havoc, as you'll see in a moment. A couple of things I want to draw your attention to. I want to make sure that my dog is taking treats as they normally would. Chaos has a really soft mouth, so I know that any time he starts snapping treats hard, he's stressed, and I need to take note of that. I also want to know any time that my dog refuses to eat, that is another indication they are stressed and I need to make it easier. Good boy. Did you decide? Good job. I saw a little lip lick there. I'm just going to keep an eye on that to make sure that that little bit of stress going, mm, I'm not sure about this, just make sure that that isn't going to continue or escalate. Good job. Well done. I can even feed at the same time. The order that we wash different body parts is really important to keep our dog comfortable. And you can see that I'm doing his shoulders first, then I'm doing along his back and his back legs and his front legs. I have not put the water anywhere near his head yet because that is really tricky. We're going to do that one last. Well done. Beautiful. Feed for hanging out on the object and then I'm going to toss a piece of food away to reset. Notice Chaos's hesitation here. These are the signs that we need to watch out for to make sure we're not pushing our dog beyond what they're comfortable with. Notice that I take the game so much slower with Havoc, but it's 100% worth playing the long game rather than forcing your dog into a situation they're not comfortable with. I'm going to say, thumbs up, well done, I've got a scary object and you're doing brilliantly around it. The best response is no response. I'm gonna release him off again and just turn the water on nice and gently. Good, you go there. Just a little bit of water. Show him the water's on. Thumbs up, best response is no response. And feed. Good, just a damp hand on him. Thumbs up and feed. Now, because I've introduced a new criterion, I'm going to release him backwards and see if he's still happy to participate. So I'm going to take his food and toss that over there. Is he still okay to come and interact? Good job. That's him offering consent. Just getting him a little bit wet. Good job. I noticed a little bit of tension in his face and a little bit of lip licking. So I'm going to take my time with this. If your dog is stressed during this, take it back a step. It's much better to spread this out over two days, three days, a week. It's better to have them succeeding over a longer period of time rather than push them on beyond what they're comfortable with, then getting fearful and you constantly chasing your tail, not actually getting anywhere with the training. Are you thinking this is not a good deal? really interesting that he's chosen to leave, leave the bucket. I'm going to turn the hose off for the moment. He's withdrawn consent. That is completely okay. At some point you may notice the same thing from your dog. I'm going to lower criteria. So I've turned the hose off and I'm going to feed him just for interacting with the wet bucket again. After I stopped yakking to the camera and I gave Havoc 100% of my focus, I noticed that he actually didn't like his paws in the puddle. That sure. was the issue you really here. Don't like those wet paws, do you? I go back to luring here just to get Havoc moving and get him more comfortable with the object again. Note that I only move on to adding water when he's able to offer his consent behaviour all on his own without being lured. Notice Havoc's little weight shift away. These are the things that so many YouTube trainers miss. Havik is always free to leave and go and calm himself down again. You don't like the water in there, do you? No, 
notice Havoc again turning his head away. These are so many little signs that many people miss. It's the dripping that you don't like, so I think it's actually going to be better if I keep the hose on you, isn't it? So if I run my hands across him, he's less upset by the dripping. You can see he's actually quite okay with the water itself, but when it drips, that's what he finds really uncomfortable. I'm gonna make sure there's no drips, and then I'm gonna feed him. No drips, no drips, no drips, no drips, and then food, food, food. One food off. See if he chooses to come back. I'm just getting his attention off the drips here so he's not so uncomfortable. Good man. And see here, because he was free to come and go as he pleases, Good he's job. not scared. His confidence builds throughout the training session. Nice high chin. Even if you think your dog is fine with things like baths or nail trimming, be on the lookout for things like them turning their head or lip licking. With all of the fur, see that, that lip lick? That's something that I'm just mindful of. And you know what? Because it was a little bit stressful, I'm gonna give him a piece of food. And by tossing the food away in our early teaching stages, we're priming that response. We want our dogs to tell us if they're uncomfortable. That way we can do something about it. We just got our bottom wet. So I'm gonna feed for that. That could be a bit tricky. Same with the tail. Wet tail. Soggy tail. Nice boy, and I'm gonna feed for that. I'm going to start, just like I did before, around his back. I'm going to make sure that I keep an eye on where his ears are. I'm going to keep an eye on his mouth to make sure he's not lip licking. I'm going to keep an eye on his tail and his whole body posture. You know, is that a little bit weird to see the lip lick? Rest assured, you cannot reinforce fear, so make sure you feed your dog. Yeah, we can't, we can't eat the soap. I'm going to start on the parts of his body that's nice and comfortable, like his back, like his legs. He really loves getting his legs massaged. So I'm going to wash those parts first and then the more tricky parts later. And I can see there's a little bit of tension on his face. This is telling me there is some work for us still to do. Just because they're compliant doesn't mean that they're comfortable. And I want a comfortable dog, a cooperative dog, not just a resigned dog. Resigned is different to relaxed. I'm gonna do his chest now. So I've got the shampoo in my hands and I'm just gonna massage exactly how I would normally stroke his chest. Just so the sensation is the same. Is that nice? We quite like our neck getting massaged too. How about we don't eat the soap? I will do under the chin. Oh, that's nice. Are you licking soap off your mouth? You're licking soap. I'm gonna feed at the same time I'm soaping him. Yep, just letting him know what I got. Feed at the same time. And then, lovely massages. And just like with Chaos, I'm starting off in the areas of his body that he doesn't mind being stroked. Starting off with his shoulders, his back, his chest, all those comfortable areas. He loves having his hips and his legs massaged. So I'm gonna start off in those areas and I'll move to the less comfortable areas a little bit later. Soap and feed, soap and feed. And notice that me letting him leave the training session before didn't make our training session worse. If I'd prevented him from leaving or if I'd ignored his low level signs of stress, he would not be this comfortable later on in our Lovely bath time. Lovely relaxed ears and tail. You see there's no tension in his face. Just a normal, normal relaxed, balanced stance. Okay, the hardest part of all is doing the face. What I wanna do for this is try and get his chin up and I'm gonna feed lots and lots and lots. I'm gonna try as much as I can to not let either the water or definitely the soap go in his eyes. So I'm gonna get a huge handful of food. I'm gonna feed up and I'm gonna start the water down the back of his neck and only gently, good boy. See him shy away then. I don't want that happening too much. Nice high chin. Nice high chin, good boy. Good boy. Oh, that was yucky, wasn't it? Yucky. Wipe the water off his eyes. Boy. Feed up. Now, give him a quick break. I'm going to toss a piece of food away and see if he wants to keep playing the game. If you notice your dog is struggling at any time, make sure you give them a break. Take your time and play the long game. Just to get him moving a little bit, I'm going to toss a piece of food away 
and play the approach the bucket game just how we started off. Good boy! Well done! I'll feed on the bucket and toss one away. Go get it! And by taking it slow like this, we've got a much better chance for our long-term training to succeed. We always want to play the long game with cooperative care. If I can't get his face perfectly washed today, it's not the end of the world. I would much rather build a happy, confident dog than force it and then have both of us struggle from here on in. Another great way that you can work to wet their face is wet your own hands. And then if your dog likes face massages, you can offer them the chance to have their face massaged. This is one of Chaos's favorite pastimes. Good boy. I'll do just a little touch up with his face. So again, I'm going to squeeze it into my hand rather than directly on his head. I'll rub my hands together. Now a great little hack is to use a chin rest. Boy. Good papa. I can use our normal type of stroking to get his chops. I'm going to take note of any time he looks away and allow him to move away from me. Chin. Good job. Just going to get the food off your head. I know, you're beautiful. Because I respected Chaos's choice and allowed him to move away, he's more willing to participate in the future. There's nothing to be afraid of. Give him a nice face massage. He adores face massages. You can see he's got some pimples under his chin. So I'm going to use a different shampoo on his chin. Just like before, I'm going to put it on my hands first and then on the dog. Hands first, then on the dog. Here we go. And now when we're rinsing, we do the exact same process. I'm going to start at his shoulders, I'll go across his back, do his back legs, and head last. So, water first, nice boy, then the food. Then both stop. Then water, then food, then both stop. That order that we do things is really important. It's important that the hose predicts good things happening. If we did it the other way and fed before the hose, then it can actually turn the dogs off their food. You can see when I'm doing his chest, I'm trying to hold his head up nice and high so he doesn't end up with water up his nose or in his eyes. Because I'm just using his dinner, I can be as generous as I like with the feeding. Do you want to get that one? I take note of what Chaos chooses to do. That tells me if he's actually comfortable or if he's just resigned to his fate. Good boy. And again, his choice to come and play the bath game. I'm going to turn the water down just so I can get near his face without it being too unpleasant. I'm going to feed the whole time. Good job, Bubba. Down to the chin. Rinse off all this soap. Good boy. Good, Bubba. Good, you see how he shies away. So that tells me I went way too far. Now, when you do make these mistakes, just reset, toss a piece of food away and take a break. If your dog doesn't return, they're telling you that they actually weren't okay and you need to take the training back a few steps. It's much better to do that rather than to force them into situations they're not comfortable with. That's only gonna hinder your training long-term. Good boy, chin up nice and high, we'll wipe that water away just to make sure we don't get any soap in his eyes. Good boy, Papa. A bit more food? Cool. I'm going to wash off the other shampoo that's around his back and then I'll wash off his chin shampoo. Pose first, then our food. And when the food stops, the hose stops. Now as I stop this hose, I'm going to wipe him off straight away with my hand so he doesn't get that dripping that he doesn't like. Lots of shampoo on there, Bubba. Remember, we never want to prevent flight because all the dog has left to tell us they're uncomfortable is fight. What are you gonna do? Are we gonna swap hands? Notice again, because I gave Havoc full control, he's not scared and he's willing to come back. Then we play the towel game. Good, see how he moves in? That's what we want. Nice towel game. We built our love of the towel game in the exact same way, with choice and patience. Look, as a puppy, Havoc used to hate the towel so much, he'd use aggressive behaviours, including growling and biting, to try to make the towel stop. 
but we built his love of the towel in the exact same way. By giving him full control, it means he's not fearful, so he doesn't feel the need to use defensive behaviours. <laughs> Do we like the towel game? <laughs> if you found this video helpful, consider subscribing so you can keep up to date with all our latest videos. Next time, I'll be working with Havoc on his loose lead walking and showing you some of my favourite games to build that concept of proximity.